This is the big new tunnel under the streets of Belfast. This tunnel is the newest part of the new sewage system for Belfast. It's four metres across and it helps the sewers to cope with heavy rain and floods in the future. But sewers weren't always as big as this. In fact, we have only had sewers for about a hundred years. In the middle of the 19th century, Belfast was a growing city. Country people were moving into the town for work in the shipyards, the mills and the rope works. Many people lived in slums owned by the mill owners. They had to live in tiny, dirty, damp houses with everyone packed into one room. There was no running water or indoor toilet or pipes to take away the sewage. Wastewater was often thrown out of the front door, leaving the streets like a river of sewage. The whole street used just one toilet at the end of the street, a simple hole in the ground with a seat over it. When it rained, the toilet would overflow into the streets and the houses. The sewage was very smelly, and when it rained, the bricks that the slum houses were made from soaked up the sewage like a sponge. This spread disease to the people in the houses, and because the houses were very close together, the diseases spread very quickly. We asked the children in St Michael's Primary School, Ravenhill Road, Belfast, why we need sewers today. Without a sewage system, all our wastewater would pollute the environment. It is important that sewage is clean to remove the harmful bacteria and germs it contains, which can make us sick. We produce 135 to 180 litres of sewage every day. Sewage is full of germs and diseases. One gram of human poo contains 10 million viruses. If sewage enters drinking water, diseases such as cholera and typhoid can spread quickly. We need to return clean water to the rivers and the sea as part of the water cycle. 14 and a half thousand kilometres of sewers bring wastewater from our homes and schools. This is Belfast Wastewater Treatment Plant, Duncrew. This is where the sewers from all over Belfast bring our wastewater to be cleaned and treated. There are millions of workers here, all busily working away on the nasty germs and rubbish that we find in wastewater. It's hard to believe that there are so many workers, but they can only be seen using a microscope. They are called bacteria, and they eat up all of the rubbish dissolved in wastewater. But before the bacteria get to work, we need to give them a helping hand. When wastewater arrives in the treatment works, it is pumped through some very large Archimedes screws. This gives it the energy to move through the first stage of treatment. The wastewater has a lot of rubbish in it, and we need to take this out before it can be treated. These are the RBI screens, where paper, plastic and other floating rubbish are filtered out of the wastewater. This rubbish is all compacted and it ends up in landfill. About 40 tonnes of this rubbish is disposed of each month. The wastewater at this stage will still have fine materials such as grit and sand and other solids in it. The water is pumped into these detritors where this material settles out and sinks to the bottom. This grit also goes to landfill. The system is designed to treat up to 3,660 litres per minute in a process that takes 12 hours. So if the amount of waste is too much, the process will be overloaded. This notch in the side of the channel is called a pen stop. The pen stop controls the amount of wastewater that goes into the treatment process. When there is too much, the water flows over the pen stop into the stormwater retention tanks so it can be treated later when the flows have returned to normal. The wastewater is directed into the primary sedimentation tanks. It spends six hours here and during that time all the solid material still in the water settles to the bottom and is removed as sludge. The water flows in at the centre. The sludge is removed from the bottom by a rotating mechanism scarring the bottom of the tank. 
An overflow all around the edge of the tank allows the water to leave. Most of the solids have now been removed from the wastewater and it is now ready to meet our millions of bacteria. The water has lost all its potential energy by now, so it is pumped up 10 metres into a balancing tank before it flows down into the aeration tanks. Here it is mixed with activated sludge. This sludge contains millions of our bacteria workers, ready to go to work on the wastewater. They readily multiply in numbers in the right conditions, and to do this they need only two things, air and food. The pollutants in the wastewater are the food, and we pump air into the tanks. As the bacteria multiply and feed on the pollutants, they clump together and form heavier material called flock. It is important at this stage that exactly the right amount of air is fed into the waste, or else the flock won't form properly. At this stage, the wastewater is known as mixed liquor, because it is a mixture of clean water and flock. The mixed liquor is fed into secondary sedimentation tanks, where this time the flock settles on the bottom of the tank. The sediment is the final sludge produced by the treatment works and is drained off to go to the incineration plant. The water coming out of the secondary sedimentation tanks is now clean and can be returned to the oceans by an outlet into Belfast Lock. The water will not harm the environment and will eventually return to the atmosphere and then the rivers as part of the water cycle. <laughs>